This is Texans TV. Texans Extra Points is sponsored by BHP and by Reliant, the official energy provider of the Houston Texans, and by your Houston area Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Texas. We are ready to rock in Houston. Touchdown, Houston! Are you kidding? What a catch! Oh, that's a baby! Texans Extra Points begins, and this is the start of the regular season. We're so happy that you're watching us. My name's Drew Doherty. I'm your host, and this week, look who we got. Our good pal, Sean Pendergast. You hear him in the mornings on Sports Radio 610. You hear him before and after games as the pre- and post-game radio host for the Houston Texans. Also writes for the Houston Press. It's great to be with you. We have so much to discuss. It's been too long. I can't wait. I can't. I'm so psyched I got the week one call. I, I got to be on the week one version. Absolutely. It's nice to be in air conditioning. You it know, is. Usually when we're doing this, it's August, and uh, we're on the sidelines Absolutely. sweating. But we start with some news of the week. We've got quick hits, and in the news of the week, Texans have a new quarterback. And it's a new quarterback for the first time since 2016 that Deshaun Watson is not the guy. Tyrod Taylor will start against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's been around. This is year 12 in the league for him, and he says he's ready. I've said this from day one. Uh, when I say day one, not just here, like from my first time of stepping into the NFL locker room, that I'll always prepare um, like a starter. Because as unique as the quarterback position is, you're literally one play away. And um, that mindset has to be that. So it's not Tyrod Taylor's first start in the NFL, but it is David Culley's first start as a head coach in the NFL. He, too, has been around the block as an assistant, but he also is prepared. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like I've had three already. Uh, yeah, so although they didn't count, they did keep the score. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching it the same way I approached those three games. Earlier in the week, the Texans completed a trade with the New Orleans Saints for quarterback Bradley Roby. He was going to figure heavily into the plans on Lovey Smith's defense. But now plans have changed. Bradley was a good football player for us. He wasn't playing this week, so our preparation has been without him. So how we're going to approach it is that we have two starting corners and, you know, Terrence Mitchell and Vernon Hargraves that are going to tee it up and uh, we'll go from there. The Jaguars come to NRG Stadium noon kickoff on Sunday afternoon and they've got Trevor Lawrence, the number one overall pick in the draft and also have a new head coach in Urban Meyer. Who are these Jaguars? Yeah, I mean, you talk about a team that's a very talented roster. You know, I think uh, Urban Meyer and those guys that uh, drafted well. You got a lot of guys that were there last year. A uh, very talented team. And uh, so we look forward to the matchup. Uh, you know, they got great corners, great defense. So, um, you know, we look forward to that. All right, Sean and I are going to get into the Jaguars matchup in just a little bit. But let's start with the Texans. Let's start with the quarterback mm -hmm. position. We know, we think, who Tyrod Taylor is. But do you know what Tyrod Taylor in this offense is going to be based on what you saw in the preseason, in training camp, and before that? I don't know that we know fully, and I certainly don't think we know the part of this that's going to make Tyrod Taylor more successful than he was in the, in the preseason. He did some nice things in the, in the in limited action that he had in the preseason, but I, and I don't blame the Texans for this. I don't know that they fully unleashed what he can do with his legs right. uh, in the preseason. And I, I think, you know, if this team's going to run the football, which it wants to do, um, I think Terod Taylor is going to have to be a, a pretty big part of that. We didn't see much of that, and I do think that the threat of the run is going to be something that's going to allow him to, to be at, at least a decent passer of the football. Look, this is going to look a lot different with yeah. Terod Taylor under center than it's looked the last few years in terms of attacking downfield. I do think Terod Taylor's ability to maneuver, ability to escape, and his penchant for protecting the football are going to be really big because this team's going to have to improve its turnover margin if it's going to win some games this year. Yeah, and I get asked all the time, hey, what do you think is going to happen with this? It's like I had an idea before, mm -hmm. you know, before the, the personnel changes in years past, but I just don't know. You yeah. know, I think things can be good because of his body of work, what he did in Buffalo and, you know, his preparation leading up to that. Been a weird couple of three years since he left the Bills, but I think he's ready. I think it's, there's, there's certainly some things that he can do well and and make happen with this offense and the guys around him. I think the guys around him, I th and I think the key is the offensive line. Yeah. That's the one part of this team that's really carried over a lot of the guys who were here 
before and from some of the things that you and I have had a chance to observe out at training camp, it looks to be a pretty well coached group. I've been impressed yeah. with James Campen, watching him coach this group and what I've heard from him in press conferences and really just watching, you know, the body of work, the progress that a guy like Charlie Heck has made. I know Charlie's not going to play this right. Sunday, but he, I think, is a good litmus test for what good coaching in a second year for him, and especially a complete year of coaching without COVID hanging over us like it was in 2020. I know it's still there. Um, Max Sharpen getting back into the starting lineup. I think Justin Britt is going to have a big effect. Yeah. Um, I think there's going to be improved center play on this team. And Titus Howard and Laramie Tunsil are two of the most talented players on the team. So the original questions about Terod Taylor, I don't think you can talk about Terod Taylor and what he's going to be able to do offensively, potentially, positively for this team without talking about the importance of the five guys in front. Yeah, and you know, Aside from Tunsil, to the right of him, those four spots, they might have four different faces at each starting spot yeah. compared to this week last year, week one at Kansas City. Now, there might be some carryover, and eventually uh, you might see some of the same faces in the same spots, but I don't know that that's going to happen. Nevertheless, even if that does happen, and if it doesn't happen, I still think, it's like you said, I believe this line will be better, and in turn, I think you're going to be able to run the football better. And that was something that Texans haven't done in a while. No, they haven't. And that'll be a real intriguing thing to see how those carries are split, how the, yeah. how the traffic is be split, split in the backfield. Well, there's five of them on the roster yeah. right now. None of them are a fullback or anything like yeah. that. You know, these are five guys who are used to touching the football when they've been out on the field. They're used to being the guy. And with Burkhead, it's a little different catching the football as opposed to running between sure. the tackles. But they're all used to being guys with the ball in their hands in some shape, form, or fashion. My guess is at most four of them dress on Sunday, if not three. So I'll be interested to see which ones are inactive, and then in turn the ones that are active, how do those carries get doled out amongst those guys? That'll be a, a really I – don't, I don't know that we learned a lot in the preseason about how that's going to look necessarily. I would think it's Mark Ingram first off uh, as far as the carries go, but I also think to keep this in the back of your mind, I know you have it, but – you out there, yeah. keep this in the back. I think we might see at least one of them get moved via trade at some point in the year. So I no think doubt. that's something to, to kind of consider and, and, and think about too. Okay, we got to get into the defense because that's a lot different than yeah. it was last year as well. But we got to turn now to a telestrator and our good friend, John Harris is breaking down the rush attack of the Houston Texans. Welcome to Texans Telestrator presented by BMW. I'm your host, John Harris, and I want to take a look at the Texans' run game as we prepare for week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Overall, training camp preseason, one of the main things that stood out was the physicality of point of attack blocks, pull blocks, those kind of things. It was at a much higher level than it's been. So let's go to the service presented by Microsoft and you can see this. Now, I will readily admit right away there's a mistake, not by the Texans. But count your Cowboys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, take another look at this, and where do you think the 11th defender may have been? Okay, so yes, the Texans did get some help on this one. And there was no Dan Quinn because he was dealing with COVID, and they found out that day, so we'll give the Cowboys a pass. This is more focused on this side of the line right here, and then Titus Howard, who's going to come and pull behind right there. Mark Ingram right here, the running back. This is a power system, gap system, however, you know, different power and gap kind of used synonymously. But they're just going to pound the point of attack here. And I love this double team block right there. Max Sharpin, Charlie Heck. They're going to get Oso Diggy Zua. And look, Osa kind of knows he's not a big guy. Osa's only about 290. He uses his quickness and his twitch, but he gets caught standing up and then he's going to get carried. Now, Anthony O'Claire is able to help on that block because there's nobody in front of him. Either way, the double team they create, shoulder to shoulder, power, leverage, and they move Osa out of the way. O'Claire then is able to get up here, and I believe that's Jalen Smith. He's able to get up to Jalen Smith and occupy him and make that block. Now, here comes one thing I think is a big facet of this run game in 2021, as long as Titus Howard stays at guard, and that's Titus on the pull. He's as athletic as you're going to find at the guard position. He pops and pulls around, gets that block right there, and now all of a sudden you got a nice seam for number two. Pop it through there. Eight-yard run on first down. You love it. Down in the red zone, you get eight yards on first down. Let's take a look at it from this direction. Farrell's going to balance up the formation. Kind of see it's, it's balanced up. O'Claire on the line. Farrell's off. And now you're going to see a really nice double team right there. Look at shoulder to shoulder. I mean, that's teaching tape as far as double teams go. 
Anthony's going to bump up here. Titus has got eyes right there for the safety. And Mark's just going to follow him. And one last thing here. Max does a really nice job of seeing the run through that we saw the Texans do a lot of. Camus Grugier Hill did this very, very well and wouldn't get blocked. Max does a great job of peeling on Van Der Esch, not allowing him to get there, and that keeps the hole open for Mark Ingram. When the pieces come together, this run game can be very good in 2021, and it's got to be starting week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Fournette running left, and he stopped. Justin Reed got in there. The D stiffens on the two-point conversion try. The Texans have lead 13-12 with 30 seconds left. Ah, yes, Justin Reed with the stop of a two-point conversion at the goal line. The last time the Texans won on Liberty Whiteout Day, which was against the Jacksonville Jaguars. And uh, for the record, Sean Pendergast of Sports Radio 610, the day after that play, yeah. uh, I heard from Mike Leach. He was a coach at Washington State back then. And okay. He, uh, Gardner Minshew was the quarterback back then. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he was quarterback in that game. He said, for the life of me, I don't know why they kept the ball out of his hands on that play. So I thought that was a kind of... <laughs> In history, because we, we've we've dealt with Leach in the past, yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's fun beautiful. Stuff. But let's let's talk about Justin Reed. He has, along with the rest of this defense, along with Lovey Smith, been vocal about the need for takeaways. Yeah. Only nine all year in uh, the 2020 regular season. They had ten in the three preseason games, and that's the preseason. So the question was, can that carry over right. into the regular season? Because it's a whole different ball of wax. Can it? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I look certainly improvement over what they did in the 2020 season. Can hard carry not to, over. Yeah. yeah, it's hard not to. I, I do, I'd have to go back and look at all the turnovers. You know, some of the turnovers were preseason type of turnovers right. where it's confusion in the backfield or a guy carrying the ball who's, you know, who's probably going to be bouncing at a local bar at some point. So can it carry over to that extent, like the ratio? You know, of course not. That's an unsustainable level probably, I would imagine, for this defense. Um, I think it's going to be a better scheme defense. I don't know that, you know, they're, they're going to need to find better players over the next couple sure. years if they're going to take that leap that they want to. But yeah, like I, of course, I have a great deal of respect for Lovey Smith. I think Justin Reed personally is going to have a big year this year. You know, I think Justin Reed is a guy who, like a lot of guys, took a step back last year. Um, but I, you know, I, we were doing bold predictions on our show at some point, and I, I said, you know, one of my bold predictions this year, Justin Reed has five career interceptions coming into this year. I think he matches his career total in interceptions this year. I, I think that's how he's going to be used. Yeah. I think he's going to be used as sort of a, a, you know, a guy who can roam and play center field and do some things in this Lovey Smith defense. So, um, yeah, long answer, yes. I, I do think that, that they can not, not just improve because they were poor last year. I think it, they can improve because there's a much higher focus on turnovers this year. I think that's a very valid prediction there, too, because he's a holdover. He's one of the few holdovers on this team. Right. But like many of the new players on this team, he's in a contract year. So that, oh, yeah. could, that could work Five in his Five picks favor. would be nice for him and his heirs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you brought up schemes. Um, yeah. And one thing, other thing that Lovey Smith talked about was Part of what we want to do is get guys like Malik Collins yeah. in one-on-one -on -one matchups with a guard because he thinks Malik Collins, who's been around the block also, can win those. And we saw some of that. We saw in the Dallas Cowboys game Malik Collins really become a pain in the you-know-what for that Dallas offense. He didn't get any sacks, but he kind of opened things up for a lot of guys. We see out of Malik Collins in this defensive front that could be better as opposed to what we saw last year. I think an athleticism in the interior that they haven't had, and that the defense that Romeo Cornell was running didn't really call for that. You know, it was yeah. more based in a 3 4, so you got kind of the bigger, heavier guys that are there to, to kind of, you know, take up blockers sure. and then let the linebackers go do the work. You're looking for more athletic guys that can get up field in Lovey Smith's defense. And I think Malik Collins, who didn't have a great year last year with the Raiders, but had done some things with the Cowboys early on in his career. Um, is one of, I think, a handful of guys who, because they're being put in a better position to succeed, I think can be very successful this year. So um, Malik Collins and the depth along that whole defensive. Been a really impressive job by Nick Casario rebuilding yep. that defensive line. I no think. doubt. You guys talk with Nick a lot yeah. on uh, Sports Radio 610 in the mornings with Seth Payne, you know, Payne and Pendergast. So that's good stuff. Make sure you listen if you can. And well, you should, not if you yes. can. You should. Sure. Um, you love trivia, I know. So yeah. we're going to do some Texans trivia. Tyrod Taylor is starting at quarterback for the Texans on Sunday. How many other players in franchise history have started on opening day? We'll have that answer later on in the show.
job in the gun. Throws it right side. Wide receiver screen. Andre Johnson across the 40, 35 to his right 30. 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Rock and roll. The Texans win it. Andre Johnson, 48 yards. My goodness. Houston wins it overtime. Oh, Andre Johnson, number 80. 2012, maybe the finest day of his career. Ends things in overtime against the Jaguars. And then a few days later, the Texans would go to Detroit, go to overtime again, deep into overtime like the, the, the week before. Yeah. And as the sun set on Thanksgiving Day, those Texans were 10-1. and They pushed to 11-1, and and then the roof caved in. Sean Pendergast, great to be with you. We got to look back at some of the, the fun times. Oh, yeah. Andre I got Johnson. tired just watching football those five <laughs> days, man. That was a lot of fun. It's a good sort of exhaustion, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I like it. All right. Let's talk about these Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, yeah. he's the real deal. But is he good enough to be the real deal in start number one as a professional? Um, well, look, obviously the He's skill. obviously good enough, but yeah, can't, you know. Yeah, obviously the skill set is there. I mean, he's, he's the number one overall pick for a reason. Um, I, I think there's a potential for him for him struggling. I, I think if you're a Texan fan and you're looking at this game and you're going, okay, what's the recipe to winning this game? And we're going to talk about the keys to the game in just a second. But I do think from a from a, a Texans defense versus Jaguars offensive perspective, this is a Lovey Smith game. You know, this is a this. You know, we don't know what the Texans are. The Jags don't really know what the Texans are. You know, it's a bunch of new guys, and I think. The newness of it is going to play into the Texans' favor, I think, early on in the season. And I think Lovey scheming up some things to, you know, to, to get it at Trevor Lawrence is going to be a big part of that. Trevor Lawrence did not look great in the preseason. I know he had put up some numbers in that last game against Dallas's backups. Right. But the one game that you look at where you go, okay, this is kind of what it might look like in the regular season, he really struggled against the New Orleans Saints in that Monday night game. It's Urban Meyer's first game also. You can have great quarterback, great head coach. At the collegiate level, it's a totally different ball game at the NFL level. All right, let's get into players to watch. We we ask you about players to watch, and we're going to get to your player to watch, your Texan to watch against the Jaguars in just a bit. But, Sean, who are you looking at? I'm going to go Terrence Mitchell. Okay. And it might have been Terrence Mitchell even before Bradley Roby sure. got traded because Bradley Roby wasn't going to play in this game anyways because of his suspension. But, you know, DJ Chark out there for the for the Jacksonville Jaguars. LaVisca Chenault's probably going to be running more stuff in the interior, slot stuff. So I think the matchup of presumably Chark versus Mitchell makes him the guy to watch for me. I'm keeping my eyes on Malik Collins. I brought him up a little moment, a little bit ago, but every day after practice and training camp, you know, we'd wait around to interview somebody. And yeah. for the first week and a half, I was interviewing a defensive player, it seemed like. And I was always waiting because he was working with Malik Collins on his handwork, his footwork, you know, getting to the quarterback. And it was a different guy each day. I mean, mm. he was kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi in a, in a sense. They were, yeah. they, were, they were relying on him. He's been around, he's seen some things, and he is highly motivated. And from what we saw in the preseason, he looked pretty darn good. Really good. So yep. if you can mess with the pocket and make this rookie quarterback uncomfortable, I think good things are going to happen. So keep your eyes on Malik Collins. As for you, you chose Justin Reed, the safety, which I think is a very worthy choice. We were sort of fighting over Justin Reed. We, we decided, well, we'll let the fans take that we one. we let you have him. Justin Reed, like we mentioned, going to be a very important part of this defense. He's one of the few you know, guys that's been around. He's been here since 2018, and he's an old, wise one. <laughs> From 2018. That, make feel, say, that 2018, makes me feel old, wise, 25 year old, or whatever he is from 2018. Ancient. Makes me but feel it does ancient. feel that way. I know it. I know it. Hey, we've got a trivia answer for you after the break, but we also have keys to the game. Don't you move a muscle. Texans Extra Points rolls on. Texans Extra Points has been sponsored by BHP and by Reliant the official energy provider of the Houston Texans. Earlier, we asked you how many Texans players have started at quarterback in franchise history. We got Tyrod, Tyrod Taylor. He's doing that on Sunday. But the answer is seven. Carr, Schaub, Fitzpatrick, Hoyer, Osweiler, Savage, and Deshaun Watson are the others. So all in, in total, week one, all week one starters. Week one starters. Week. Opening day for some of you, as yeah. I said earlier, yeah, kind of yeah. like a baseball. Anyways, this is the Sean one that Henry's. gets people is Savage. I bet I probably they forget so. because Deshaun Savage, played in the game. Because Deshaun played in the game and never looked back after. That's right. That, so. That's right. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's time to get Ticketmaster keys to a victory for the Texans. What must they do on Sunday? 
I got one key on each side of the ball. Cool. We've touched on it. You you kind of touched on it with Malik Collins. I kind of touched on it with the, the the need for a pass rush to help out the secondary. Yeah. Uh, I think rattling Trevor Lawrence, you know, doing some things. I said earlier, this is a Lovey Smith game. Lovey Smith needs to find some ways to get at Trevor Lawrence, rattle him a little bit, force some turnovers, get in his head. That's number one on the defensive side of the ball. I think on the offensive side of the ball, and this is, I think, going to be a key throughout the year, but this is week one, so I'll use it today. Stay ahead of the chains. You know, the running yeah, game, they're, they're going to yeah. want to run the football. So I think the key is going to be first down, you know, getting into second and five and second and four right. as opposed to second and eight and second and nine. So I think if they stay ahead of the chains, it means they're running the football. It means they're controlling the clock. They're keeping Trevor Lawrence off the field, you know, that kind of stuff. Those are good ones. I think my two could help yours, too, okay. uh, because I've got takeaways. I bang on that drum, and you're probably sick of it if you've watched this show for some time. But plus three, that's what they, uh, they well, they want three takeaways per game. The goal is also 20 strip attempts per game. They want to get on attempts. Attempts. They want hands on leather 20 times okay. at least. And if you can do that, you're looking good. And then you've got this... Ferrari of a return man and Andre Roberts mm. that's been in the garage all August long. Yeah. Looks like he's going to play. So let's see something from him. Let's see a big return that flips like the field and moves things. Or hey, let's get uh, get a fumble uh, off of a punt, you know, uh, some punt coverage because Cameron Johnson, the punter that came here from the Eagles, one of the reasons he came here, money aside, he loved the gunners that were going to be uh, oh, running yeah. down the field for him. And I know you love punter talk. Dude, uh, he was I, fun to watch in the preseason. He was great. Yeah. Let's uh, see what the Australian can do for the Texans. Yes. All right, we appreciate you watching. Make sure you go to HoustonTexans.com slash tickets to come out to a game here at NRG Stadium. And make sure before the game this Sunday, you watch Texans Unlimited live at 11 a.m. on all the social channels or the mobile app or HoustonTexans.com. For Sean, I'm Drew. We appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, go Texans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.